On the face of it, JB Holmes doesn't look like much of an athlete, or even a golfer for that matter. His grisly physique and wild golf swing emulates that of a weekend golfer trying to hit the ball as far as he can. But whilst the game was still stuck in its old ways, it needed somebody to jump straight on tour and bring a little spice to the PGA dish. Born in 1982, Campbellsville, Kentucky, John Bradley Holmes grew up on his parents' farm. Coming from a town with a population as small as 10,000 people, friends and team sports were very few and far between. At 14 months old and still in diapers, little John began his journey hitting balls in the back garden of the farm. From this point on, he never put a club down and by age four was playing on golf courses. John's father was an ex-college baseball player and took up golf at the same time as his son. It was perfect time to spend together and he was the first person to believe in JB and thought that this kid could go somewhere. By the third grade, John was shooting impressive scores. Being a small town, his father knew the coach at Taylor County High School and asked him what his kids were shooting around the nine holes. To make the team, you needed to be able to shoot 50. And with that, JB was allowed to play. John would go on to play 10 years of high school golf, getting an edge up on anyone his age group. It wasn't solely golf that was of interest to JB. Like his father, he liked baseball. At age 12, he played in his first junior golf tournament and won it. He then won his next three. At this point, JB thought he actually might be pretty good at this game. With four wins under his belt straight away, most kids would join an organisation like the AJGA, but not John. He didn't want to travel the country at such a young age and miss out on playing with his friends in the summer, and also didn't want to put financial strain on the family. Instead of playing in the big junior tours, John stayed local. In this time, JB's progression skyrocketed, and when the tours came closer to home, still got the chance to play the top-ranked juniors in the country. When the big names came to town, JB was told he would never be as good as these players, as they were getting bad of experience on him week in week out and when it came to college be twice the player he was. After thrashing the number five ranked player in the country, JB knew this wasn't true and was going to continue on his own quest. This quest would come with its consequences though. Because of the little junior background, JB didn't get much attention from colleges. In fact, you could probably count on one hand the amount of serious offers he actually got. He was constantly turned down and regularly told he wouldn't make it. On most occasions, this would break somebody, but JB's mindset was built different. He decided to stay local and prove everybody wrong on the course. Upon joining the University of Kentucky, the golf team was ranked 150th in the country. When leaving in his senior year, JB left the team ranked 10th. During that time, he took the Wildcats to their first SEC championship and was named Player of the Year. His outstanding college performances got him a call up to the Walker Cup and Palmer Cup teams. Here, JB was part of two winning teams and could now bow out his amateur career proving every college coach wrong. Upon turning pro, JB headed straight for qualifying school. Back then it was an annual thing and if you failed to qualify, you had to wait another year. JB didn't want to blow his chance, so seeked professional help and tried gaining an advantage on all his peers. His plan was never to look at the scoreboards and just play his golf and if that was enough come Sunday, great. He played well. Day one, he shot under par and avoided eye contact all day. Day two, the media started to talk to him, so he asked politely if they could not mention the score. Day three, he shot under par again, and once again, the media wanted to talk to him. This time, they let it slip, and JB realized he was four shots clear. He finished the final round under par and won the event. 32 people got a card that year, so even top 25 would have been good enough. JB's first event on the PJ Tour would be the Sony Open in Hawaii. He arrived nice and early on the Monday and was planning to get a good feel for the course. Before even getting out onto the course, JB pulled something in his back warming up. He was advised he should withdraw from the competition, but having traveled this far and making his debut, there was no chance he was pulling out. He asked if playing would make things worse. They wouldn't get worse. You will just feel pain the whole time. JB played all four days and finished inside the top 10 on his debut start, not fully fit. After getting away with it the first time, JB wasn't about to risk it again. He withdrew from his second event after the first round shooting 74. In between his next event, John went to see a chiropractor who had worked with people such as Kobe. He snapped him back into place and it turned out he was carrying 60% of his weight on one side, causing his bad back. He returned to the Buick Invitational, feeling as nimble as ever, finishing three under par and falling just short of the top 25 position. With his back pain free and a fan base already starting to build, people were crowding round to see this new guy pound the ball 50 yards past everyone who he was playing with. He entered one of the rowdiest tournaments on the PGA Tour schedule, the FBR Open now called the Phoenix Open, and didn't disappoint his fans. He opened up with a 68, followed by rounds of 64, 65, 66, with a winning total of 21 under par. JB had done it. 
The new powerhouse on tour bulldozed his way through the field and grabbed his first PGA Tour win on his fourth time trying, becoming the fastest player ever to make $1 million on the PGA Tour. With his card now secure, JB could now play stress-free golf. But stress-free golf didn't result in good finishes. His form tanked and he missed several cuts and even when making cuts was way down the leaderboard. 2007 was a similar story but just without the win. His mindset after winning that early competition made him think it was going to be easy. But now with a season without a win, people were already claiming that it was a one-shot wonder. JB had to dig deep again and really find that hunger to win again. In a familiar setting, JB entered the FBR Open two years after winning for the first time. A lot had changed since that win, but JB's memories were still fresh and he knew how to win round there. JB started the final round four shots clear and was made to chase down Phil Mickelson, who was having a round of his life. The pair ended up in a playoff and JB hit a 359 yard tee shot to get us underway. JB was pumped and sunk his six foot putt to win the tournament for a second time. John pushed on from this victory this time around though and was called up by Paul Azinger to be part of the 2008 Ryder Cup in his home state of Kentucky. JB defeated Soren Hansen on Sunday singles to put the US within one point of clinching the cup. Jim Furyk would follow up behind and put the final nail in the coffin and the US would win. JB was named the Kentuckian of the year and things were really going in the right direction for John. The following year was a little rocky and JB's form dipped again. However, 2010 was an incredible display of golf and it looked as though Holmes had switched it up again. He played 26 events, only missing two cuts, had three top 10s and 12 top 25s, including a runner-up. JB was in the form of his life and that next win was right around the corner. At the 2011 PGA Championship, JB's confidence was sky high, but unfortunately his body wasn't on the same page as he was. He shot a very disappointing 80, 10 over power his first day and immediately withdrew after the round. He stated he had been dealing with severe vertigo symptoms for several months now and after visiting a doctor was diagnosed with structural defects in the cerebellum, known as Chiari malformations. JB underwent brain surgery straight away, taking a piece of his skull out and replacing it with a titanium plate. All seemed to have gone okay until about a month later, JB woke up in the middle of the night throwing up and was rushed by air ambulance from his home to the hospital. It was later brought to light that John had an allergic reaction to the glue used and a stitch came loose causing fluid to sit in his scar. The second surgery wasn't as straightforward as the first and really had people worried about him. The 2012 comeback would have been somewhat close of a miracle if he had won but a dream it remains. However to play 25 events after two major brain surgeries is a miracle in its own right and JB was just happy to be back playing and back competing. After his surgery, part of the recovery process required JB to get in better shape. He couldn't stand cardio like running, so chose rollerblading instead. Months after his surgery, whilst out rollerblading with his wife, JB hit a pothole and broke his ankle. This resulted in another season out of the game, and JB was once again on a speedy recovery mission. With a broken ankle, JB wasn't able to practice his swing properly, but as soon as his foot recovered, he was hitting more balls than anyone had ever hit before. Practicing every day, trying to make up for lost time. Unfortunately, lightning would strike twice. After hitting so many balls, JB gave himself tennis elbow, which required surgery as well. JB couldn't catch a break and these times were extremely low for him. Upon his return, JB carried on where he left off. He looked in the same form as before, with no signs of fatigue. He started the year with top 10s and top 25s before eventually winning at the Wells Fargo Championship. With four rounds under par, he beat Jim Furyk by one stroke and was back on winning ways. It was his first win in six years and shot him back up the world golf rankings, as well as securing his card once again. This roller coaster of a career so far had pushed JB to the absolute limits, but proved just how much he wanted this. The next few years were nothing out of the ordinary after Holmes had won a game. He went into cruise control, landed himself in a few playoffs, which he would lose to Jason Day at the Farmers Insurance Open in 2015, and then finished runner up behind Dustin Johnson, which took his world ranking to number 19 in the world and his highest ever ranking. JB made his mark on the PGA Tour and people loved to watch him, but players hated to play with him. After a video in 2018 went viral of Holmes taking over four minutes over the ball and eventually laying up, JB was getting criticised with slow play and was being closely watched on tour. JB was furious by these accusations but was backed by Justin Thomas at a time when everyone had turned on him. This media frenzy could have hit hard but it would light a fire in JB's stomach and make him hungry once again. In February 2019, JB would have the perfect time to silence his critics by winning his fifth PGA title and his first in nearly four years. JB 
JB overcame a four-shot deficit in the final round to finish one stroke ahead of 54-hole leader Justin Thomas. Rain interrupted the week, so 34 holes was required on Sunday. So JB was back onto winning ways, but that usually ends up in misery for Holmes, and this time wasn't any different. In 2020, he only managed eight events, withdrawing from two, and then tried battling through 2021. He missed the cut in nine out of 19 tournaments and withdrew from another two events. This withdrawal was his 10th mid-tournament withdrawal from 345 stars, meaning he hadn't managed the top 25 since the 2020 Pebble Beach pro -Am and meant he would miss out on qualifying for the Open Championship. At the age of 40, JB has spent as much time away from the course as he has on it. He proved himself on many occasions, fighting back from injury, getting off the canvas and continuing to fight. But again he finds himself on the sidelines, fighting for a place back in the team. The recent back injury has seen him miss another full season on tour, and adds another injury to his human anatomy arsenal. As he gets older, recovery will take longer and his card will rely on him staying fit. JB returned in 2023 at the Farmers Insurance Open and opened up with a respectable 70 to open up his tournament. Day two, however, proved he's got a lot of work to do as he shot a very disappointing 83, 11 over par to miss the cut. He tries again this week at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am as he starts yet another slug back from injury. Another win wouldn't surprise me from John as he's got the heart of a lion, but another injury wouldn't surprise me either. He'll keep fighting till his body can't go anymore, but the riders give us this far will make sure we remember him. There's an abundance of long hitters on tour today. That's just the modern way. But John Bradley Holmes did it in a time when he was one of the first. Mm -hmm.